let's talk about the Android components, the components behind any Android app that you might create. One component I have already talked about which is an activity. So everything that you see on an Android application screen is a part of an activity. If you people can relate to other programming languages, let me talk about an activity as a form in the .NET perspective, right? So everyone just remember that an activity is very much like a form that has got a few set of user interfaces that the user interacts with. If you talk about a Facebook application, the Facebook application also has got an activity where the user sees the news feeds, the user sees the friend requests and everything, right? So I hope the activity component of the Android application is clear to everyone. Any doubts, any questions, you can respond back onto the chat window. Let's then talk about the intents. If I talk about the intents, what I necessarily mean is that the intents are the action initiators. I told you something that if I want to have a query or access to all the images that are housed onto the device, the intents are the one that help me in doing that. It's more so the action initiators that I have. For example, I want to say, okay, I have screen one, I have screen two. All right, Samir has asked me a very good question here. What software we need to develop the app? If you take a look, Samir, I've already got it opened up for you, right? So this is an Eclipse environment with, with the ADD bundle plugin. Can you see that? Java ADD. It's more so an Eclipse software with the ADD plugin installed into it that we'll be making use of in order to develop our applications. You can see that this is my workspace, right? So whatever I'll be creating will be created as a part of my workspace. Samir. Any doubts, any questions? You can respond back. Then we talked about intents, all right? So I told you the intents are the action initiators. For example, I say I have to launch screen one, right? which has to be launched from screen 2 and I can do a vice versa, I can say it's launch screen 2 from screen 1. So what I need to do is I need to have an action initiation done. That action initiation is the part of the intents. Then we have another component which we call as service. Has anyone taken a look at a call recording application? Any call recording application, has anyone taken a look at it? If anyone knows about it? No, Samir. Uh, all right, Samir has asked me a question here. Can we use a Dreamweaver or VB for app development? Actually, they are majorly done uh, used for C++ programming, Samir. And how? What we are doing is we are doing a Java development. So we'll be making use of NetBeans, or we'll be making use of the Android Studio, or we'll be making use of the Android ADD bundle. So that is how we'll be doing the app development. It's just that the Dreamweaver or the VB does not support this kind of development, Sandeep. Samir, sorry. Let's talk about a service. All right. I say what I want to do is I want to have the user call recorded. Anytime the user receives a call, I want my application to have the call recording done in the background. All right. App Accelerator is for uh, cross application development, Tarun. All right. When we talk about, say, a, a call being received, what I want to do is I want to record the call in the background. Whenever we talk about anything that runs in the background and does not have a user interface, then I'll be having a service component working for it. That will do the recording for me in the background. So any background work that I need to do, I'll be making use of a service for it. Moving on, we have another component which we call as a content provider. I told you about the content provider a little in brief. That is, images, the SMSs, the call logs, the call history, everything is a part of the system's resources. That is, a network Android device's resources. So what the Android device does is, it does not allow me access to the database of these applications, for example, the call logs, the contacts, the messages, it does not allow me access to their database. What it does is, it keeps a layer in between. The layer is called the content provider. 
when I talk about a layer as the content provider, what I necessarily mean here is that the layer of the content provider is just assuming right, that any application can make use of the content provider. So it does not bind the database to any application. However, the layer binding has the application with it. It's more so, I'll just give it to you, it's more so a layer in between activity or my application understands or just works with the layer. The layer works with the database. The database responds back to that layer and my layer just responds back to my application. So it is that kind of a work that is done with the help of the content providers. Moving on, we have a broadcast receiver. All right, question for everyone. How do I get to know that I have got an alarm that need to be rung? How do I get to know whenever I'm traveling, my time zone has changed? Anyone who can think about it? They are actually a system events. Whenever I plug in the charger, right, I get to know my battery has got started charging. So they are actually a receiver pattern. That is, as soon as an event happens, as soon as an event happens, what happens is my application gets notified that this particular event has taken place. So these are like the broadcast receivers. That's correct. It's more so an event that has been kept by the system, right? And whenever the event happens, my system gets notified that this particular event has happened. So that is how we take care of the broadcast receivers. Let's move on. See an activity. I told you every screen that you see on an Android device is an activity. And you can see that and relate to it with the help of a Facebook application example. Let's talk about the life cycle of an activity. If you talk about, there's a screen, right? There's a screen. But that screen has got a various callbacks. I'll tell you an example. I'm actually taking a look at a screen. However, I'm looking at, when, when I'm looking at the screen, what I do is I do get a phone, phone call. Right? I do get a phone call. I disconnect the phone. And what happens is I'm still at the same screen. Right? Everyone, just respond back to the query that I asked you. I have an application up and running. I get a phone call. I finish up the phone call. I'm again taken back to the activity that I was looking at. Is that correct? I'll wait for your responses back on the chat window. What happens is that Android is a device, right? And we have limited memory, limited CPU. It's not as good as a laptop that is running on an i5. It's not good. It's, it's not as good as it, right? So what we need to do is we need to make use of the resources judiciously. When I say making use of the resources judiciously, what I necessarily mean is that I need to handle the various callbacks in order to let the resources be allocated and let the resources be deallocated. So let me take a few use case scenarios wherein my activity might enter in what state. Whenever I create an activity, we'll be talking about when we will be covering this course more in detail. I go on to on create, on start, on restore, on resume. My activity starts running. I get a call, right? My activity gets into the pause mode. As, as long as the call is going on, what should happen to the system resources? Should they still be occupied? Or should they be released? Question for everyone. <coughs> if I'm making use of a system resource, all right, I'm making use of some services, I'm making use of some activity components, buttons, images. Should they be released? Should they be still occupied? Vajra says still occupied. Sandeep says released. I would say Vajra, they should still be occupied. However, they should not be performing any functioning. Is that correct? I say they still should be occupied but not performing any work. Is this correct? Right? So what I do is whenever 
I get a call, my activity goes into the pause state. As the call is in progress, the activity is stopped. That is, I'm not performing any work under it. I finish up the call, I again call on resume, and I go on, the activity again starts running. Anyone having any doubts, any questions, understanding the use case of the activity getting stopped? I'll wait for your responses. I'll give you another use case. I say I have the application up and running and what I have done is I have pressed the home button of the device. When the home button gets pressed, what happens? Does my application do any work? When I have placed my application in the background, does my application do any work? First of all, it will first of all go into the pause state then it will also go into the stop state. Take a look at the stop state as something wherein I'm not seeing the activity on screen. Just understand it like this. Anytime the activity is not being seen on the screen, it has stopped. Is this, is this example correct, clear to everyone? Now let's take a look at an example wherein I am launching an activity. I'm launching my application. I do p press the hardware back button. I say the I press the hardware back button. When I press the hardware but back button, what happens? The activity goes off. I'll wait for you to respond back. Whenever I press the hardware back button, the activity goes off. In this case, what will happen is First, will, first call will be done to the pause state, second call will be done to the stop state and third call will be done to the destroyed state because now I as a user have manually destroyed this application. Any doubts, any questions? I'll wait for your responses back onto the chat window. Moving on. The third component, the intents. As I said, you can think of intents as a verb and an object. For example, you want to call from within your application. You want to play a music file from within your application. This is all something that is governed with the help of the intents. Let me also tell you, we are just covering a brief about all these components. When we'll be covering on the actual development, you'll get to know a lot more in detail about these components. All right? Moving on, switching between activities, as I said, one of the primary objectives of intent is also to initiate one activity from another, right? Services. First of all, can everyone take a look at the life cycle of a service? It has got starting, running, destroyed, no pause. Can everyone see that? It, has, it does not have a pause state in the life cycle. Whenever I talk about a service, right, do, does a service have a user interface? Does a service have a user interface? Since it does not have a user interface, what it will, what it will do if, I go, it, if it goes into the pause state? The reason the service does not have a user interface, there is no requirement of a pause state since the user is not interacting with the service. It keeps doing its work in the background so even if it is stopped, it can only have two states. One is on, one is off, right? Since the user does not interact with it, no pause state here. Let's also talk about what are the types of services, right? There are actually two types of services that we make use of. One is bound, one is unbound. A bound service is something that is activated or initiated with the help of an activity and is in the memory only till the time the activity is up. However, the unbound service is something that is associated with an entire application and will be up till the time the application is alive. And a use case, I have around 20 screens within my application and I can have a service running on only two screens from within my application. This is an example of a bound service. I have 20 screens in my application 
and I want my service to be running irrespective of the activity that I have in my application. That is an example of an unbound service. An example keeps running in the background, request or looks for the news feeds by the friends or notifications that you get about the friend requests. Content providers, you can see that the layer I was talking about, my app interacts with the content providers, the content providers ultimately interacts with the database. Perform operations like querying up, deletion, insertion and the updation. Then the broadcast receivers, as I said, it is a system broadcast, so what happens is, first of all, I need to register my intents to observe for a broadcast. As soon as the observer gets the observance done, it gets a notification when the intent occurs. An example, alarm that wakes up or rings the device when the stipulated time is reached is triggered with the help of a broadcast receiver. Moving on, now you know about what is an activity, what are intents, what is a service, what are content providers, what are broadcast receivers. Let's talk about an activity. When I talk about an activity, it is more so a screen that the user interacts with. So if I'm creating an application and my application has got 20 screens that interact with the user, so I'll say call them 20 activities. Now, the activities need to be triggered one from the another one, right? One to two, two to three, and so on. That action of initiating an activity from one activity to another is the one that is taken care of by the intents. Talking about services, anything that does not have a user interface and keeps running in the background. It keeps running in the background, and once its process gets over, it will notify the user interface that I have downloaded this data and now what you want to do is you want to show up on the user interface this data. Activity starts an unbound service to listen for our broadcast receiver and whenever the broadcast receiver is received, all right, what we can do is we can start an activity or we can also update the UI current, right? For example, I have downloaded some data, what I can do is I can update the data on it. Then we have content providers, a central repository of the data which, where, which our application may look up to. Then we have the broadcast receivers, as I said, a broadcast receiver is a, is a dormant receiver that only observes for anything that is being received. Everyone knows what are the building blocks, life cycle, how the hand, hardware events are being handled, the background jobs, the multiple apps, access, share resource that is the content providers.